Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 26, Isaiah chapter 26. We're going to look at verse 3 and 4, Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3 and 4. The title of the message is, Do You Have Perfect Peace? Do You Have Perfect Peace? Isaiah 26, verse 3. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. Trust ye in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. Brother Caleb, can you pray for the message? Do you have perfect peace? You know, peace is something that people strive to get. Why do people work? Why do people go to school? Why do people exercise? Because they want to find that peace after they achieve some goals in their life. They feel like if I make certain amount of money, I'm going to have that peace. People feel like if I have, you know, strong bicep, if I work out, my body feels good, I'm going to have peace. People, if I were to go to this place, travel to Hawaii, Alaska, or even certain places, beautiful places like in California, God's creation, like Yosemite, you're like, I'm going to have peace. Or wrong cases, I'm going to do drugs, I'm going to find peace, right? I'm going to go gamble, and I'm going to find peace. I'm going to go to club. I'm going to have peace. I'm going to listen to this music, and it gives me peace. I'm going to watch this movie. I'm going to have peace. A lot of people look for peace in their life. However, almost all cannot find it because it's temporary. They're not really a perfect peace. They are temporary pleasures, right? little pleasure that they will experience for a little bit. If you ask a gambler, they say, oh yeah, I do not have peace. I have to go to Vegas, I have to go to these Indian casinos, and then I have to play the slot. And when I go through those thrills, when I bring down the slot machine, that's when I have peace. And you think that if they were to win money, they have peace. 100% on the contrary. Even after they win, based on a lot of people's testimonies and a lot of you know, people's you know, sayings, and they're like, nah, even if I win, there's no peace. Just like people who do drugs. They smoke marijuana or they do some other heavy drugs. At that moment, they feel like they have peace. However, right after a few hours goes by, right, there's no peace. They're still yearning for something more. People who work hard, all right, I got this job. And I wanted this promotion, so I work really hard. And you get your promotion. Right? You're happy for that moment, but there's no peace. Right? Now you're worrying about the next promotion. You're worrying about something else. So in life, one thing for sure is that when you look for peace other than Lord Jesus Christ, you'll never have that perfect peace. But even as a Christians, as saved Christians, there are very few Christians with perfect peace. Why is that? 
Number one thing is because of sin. Because your, your life is full of sin, or because you have that constant sin problem, you cannot have peace. Unless you clean up your sin problem, don't ever expect to have a perfect peace in your life. Obviously, in order to even get to that point, you need to get saved so that you won't have to worry about burning in hell. There's one peace that Christians have that you know, unsaved people don't have. That's peace, everlasting peace of going to heaven once and for all. Many churchgoers don't have that peace to begin with. If you are listening to this message, do you have that peace where if you were to die right now, do you know for sure 100% that you go to heaven? It's not 50%. It's not 70%. It's not even 99.9%. Do you have 100% without any doubt that you go to heaven? If you have any doubt, that means that you could go to hell. Or you're most likely going to hell. Because you haven't trusted Lord Jesus Christ 100% as your Lord and Savior. If you trusted him, if you believe that Jesus died for you, if you believe that, you know, his blood can wash away all your sins. And if you accepted him in your heart as your Lord and Savior, then you're saved. Then you should have no worries about burning in hell. None at all. Because God will not lie. Because that's what the Bible says. Then one thing no Christian should ever worry about is burning in hell. So that peace you should have. If you don't, then talk to someone. You know, listen to you know, more messages in our channel about salvation plan, right? Because you need to have that peace. That's a peace that once you get it, you should never, ever lose. I say, I should even say, you might think that you lost it, but it already happened. So even if you think you lost it, you know, you're going to go end up in heaven no matter what. So that's a, that's a great thing in this age of grace. Once you're saved, you're saved forever. That's what the Bible says. You know, you know, don't argue with me or don't argue with anybody else. You know, argue with the Word of God then, because that's what the Bible says. Right? So if you trust that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, then you have that peace that, you know, one day I'll be in heaven. Right? You have that peace. When the day of rapture comes, you know, I'll go up. You know, that's an amazing peace that you and I can have and enjoy. However, as Christian, as you walk, your Christian walk, Many Christians don't have perfect peace because of sin problem. I mean, why would the Bible say in you know, 1 John 1, 9, you know, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Why? Because saved Christians struggle with sin. You have sin problem that's going on in your life where you think that if I were to enjoy that sin problem, you receive that peace. So devil has deceived you. You know what? You know, this sin, let's call it sin A. Just do it. It's okay. You know it's wrong, but you do it. And you feel like you're going to have peace. But at the end of the day, you don't have any peace. You're nervous. You're anxious. A lot of Christians live an anxious, nervous Christian life. And that's not a good testimony. The reason you're anxious is because Holy Spirit is convicting you, telling you what you're doing is wrong. Look at Church of Corinthians, known as a carnal church. They've done a lot of stuff that I can't utter, utter from my mouth. But there's say Christians. But they were struggling with those problems. When you're struggling with sin, and when you let that sin, whether it's one, two, or three, or multiple sin, constantly control your life, you will never have perfect peace. And a lot of times, you know, people think this way. Oh, he said about, you know, outside appearance, like no TV, 
like no rock music, no cigarettes, you know, not going to the movies, you know, no tobacco, no drugs, you know, you have to dress right. And if you're talking about those outward things, you, you pretty much, you understand and you're in line. However, once you start hearing about preachings about cleaning up inside, that's when you start losing Christians. Once you start hearing about cleaning about inside you, then I'm start losing you. You start turning off preachers because your body, your inside doesn't want to hear it. You and I could, we're good actors, honestly. A lot of people are good actors when it comes to sin. You could hide from me. You could hide from your parents. And you could hide from your wife. And you could hide from your husband. You could hide from your neighbors. You could hide from your coworkers. You could hide from your bosses. One thing for sure is that you and I were great actors, whether you know it or not, especially when it comes to sin. How many times or how many days have you gotten away with your sin, hiding from your loved ones? I don't know what it is, but you know what it is. It could be lustful sin. It could be relationship sins. It could be pride sin. It could be a lot of sin. Almost, and you name it. And you think that it's okay. That's why you don't have peace. It's not okay. As a saved Christian, don't ever be deceived that hiding my sin from my family from my loved ones, from the church, and from anybody else, it's okay. It's never okay. It's never okay for you to hide your sin. But you do. How many of you guys listening right now think that you have that perfect peace? I guarantee you there's very few. Very few people have that perfect peace. You're, you're anxious about a lot of things. You're just constantly anxious. And it all comes down to one thing, especially from my experience, especially from reading the Word of God, especially from listening to a lot of great preachings. It's because you're not cleaning up your inside. When are you ever going to clean up your inside to have that perfect peace? That's why a lot of people... On the outside, they're smiling. When dealing with outside people, even inside church, you're smiling. But inside, there's snake inside of you. Oh, I hate that brother. I hate that sister. I mean, I'll, I'll never know because your face says otherwise. You're smiling, shaking hand, communicating. But inside of you, you're full of jealousy, envy, and hate. So outwardly, you could fake it. But inwardly, you can't. Lord knows and Lord sees it. It's like someone having a barn. You know, everybody knows barn, right? You know, where you have a lot of animals inside. And it's smelly. You know, there are a lot of manures in there. And sometimes, I'm going to clean up my barn. So what do you do? You lock the door, and you just paint the outside. And then you're showing people, hey, I have a clean barn. Right? But you won't let anybody open that door. Because inside is so dirty. That's what you are as a Christian. Everybody's dressed nice today on your Sunday attire. Yes, you have a clean barn. I see. But can I open that door? Is that clean inside as well? If you have any sin problem that you're going through, then I'm going to say you have some stinking problem inside your barn. You probably have you know, a lot of manures there. You have a urine. You have feces. You have a lot of stuff everywhere. 
What about for those people? What if you never clean inside? You're always, you know, painting outside, right? You're painting outside. So inside, what would happen? Now, I have, I have a little dog. Some of you guys have dogs, and you might have, you know, cats, right? And say they, they make a mistake, and they poo inside the house, you know, they pee inside the house. But what happens if you never clean it up? I tell you, I mean, those smells, I mean, urine smell, those feces smell, man, they stink. They smell so much. And I don't think anybody in this room or anyone who's listening will enjoy that. And what's the first thing you do then as someone who lives in your house? You clean it up. You clean it up right away. Why? Because it smells. But nobody as a Christian, especially nowadays, because of all these watered-down things out there, and because of your false sense of you know, security that I'm okay, you never clean up your inside. Your heart is not clean. That's why you cannot get rid of that sin problem. Because devil will attack you, and he will constantly attack you. Devil will never, ever stop. Devil hates you so much. Devil hates you because you're going to heaven for eternity. But he's going to burn in hell forever. You were once his child, but now you're a child of God. He hates you so much. That's why the Bible says, be sober, be vigilant. But a lot of you guys are sleeping. You're sleeping. In the past week or week and a half, in the past month, I guarantee some of you, if not all of you, have fallen into sin that you've fallen in the past. Because usually the devil will not attack you with the new ones. He already knows. If I know that you like this cookie, I'm going to offer you that cookie constantly until you completely say no. Until I see that for years and years and years, you're not going to touch it anymore. However, for how many of you guys, especially if you're addicted to a certain type of sin, you know, maybe you were sin-free for two months, six months, one year, two year, but you do it again. The sad part about that sin is that once you start doing it again, you can't stop. It's like eating popcorn, right? You start eating it, you, just, you can't stop with just one popcorn. You keep on eating it, you know, until you see these things and then you start cracking your teeth because you finished the whole bucket. But that's how scary sin is. Once you open it up, you don't stop. You don't stop with that first try or first commit. You're going to do it and do it and do it until you realize after you've gone through the whole cycle, man, I was a terrible sinner. That's how scary sin is. That's why you cannot resolve your sin problem and have that perfect peace unless you clean out your inside. People who have, say, relationship problems, right? Man problem or woman problem. And don't tell me that because you're a Christian, you know, you don't lust after other people. You do, because you're a human being. If you say from your outside, okay, I'm just faithful to this person, and then you do all the right things. You show your affection and love and your charity to that single person, love of your life. However, if it's just the outside that you're cleaning up, and if it's not coming from inside, which is full of you know, dirty things, what's going to happen eventually? What's going to happen? That sin will show its ugly head, and it's going to destroy you, your loved one, and your family. That's how scary sin is. That's why God wants to warn you. 
where you are anxious and you're nervous because you refuse to clean up your sin problem. When are you ever going to clean it up? I mean, that's the thing. I mean, I'm preaching to myself as well. I mean, when am I ever going to clean it up? When are you ever going to clean it up? The same sin that you do over and over and over. Why is it that you continuously do it? Why? Because you never commit yourself to really clean it up from inside. You're always about outside. When people try to just cover outside, what happens? It never goes long. It never endures, right? That's why for many of you who do not have perfect peace right now, it's because you're not trusting in the Lord. You're trusting in yourself. You think that I could, I could resolve this sin problem, right? I could resolve it. They're like, you know, I have woman problem. I could resolve it. You know, I have drug problem. I could resolve it. You know, I have gambling problem. I could resolve it. You know, you know I have a you know, music problem. I could resolve it. Uh, whatever the sin is out there, you're like, you know, sin A through Z, you know, I could resolve it. Where'd that get you? It didn't get you anywhere. It just made you come to the same place over and again, over and over and over and over and over again. You start committing same sins over, 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 over again. And how can you say you truly turned away from that sin? How can you say you truly, truly, you know, trusted the Lord for his strength, for his guidance to defeat that sin? I tell you this, many of the men of God who were used once greatly by God fell because they did not completely clean out their barn. They had that one little stinky thing inside that they never completely cleaned up. They sprayed it. How many of you guys like to use spray, really? Like Febreze or any of those, you know, sweet smelling smells? Because, you know, you refuse to completely clean it up, right? You know, your, your clothes, your bed, you know, if someone's visiting, you know, you should wash it up. You know, take it to the laundry, laundry room and then clean it up. No, nah, you're like too lazy, so I'm just going to spray things. And then it smells good for how long? For a little bit. But the smell disappears. And it's same old stinky thing. Your sin is same. You try to cover it up for a little bit here and there. But what happens? Once that sweet smell disappears and it reveals that sin again. That's why if you don't get rid of your jealousy, if you don't get rid of your envy, what happens? It's always going to be there. It's always going to show itself up. It's almost like, you know, there's a bad virus. Or maybe, an example, there's a flea, Okay. You know, animals have fleas, and you know, dogs have fleas, cats have fleas. Fleas are very, how should I say, you know, they have long life or they're pesky. You have to really kill it to kill it. Yeah. Like you have to completely squeeze it or you have to like really, 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 really make sure that it's dead. Or else it's going to be alive again. Just like your sin. If you don't completely kill it, if you don't completely destroy it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take some time. It's going to take some time to revive itself. And it grows again. And it gets alive again. And then what happens? It's going to be you know, sucking the blood, just like that flea. And it's going to rule over your life. Charles Wesley said, I rest beneath the almighty shade. My griefs expire, my troubles cease. 
Thou, Lord, on whom my soul is stayed, will keep me still in perfect peace. You just don't put your peace, you don't put your self stayed on the Lord. That's why you don't have peace. You would have peace, you know, if you have a constant communication with the Lord. You would have peace if you have resolved your sin problems. You would have peace if you cleaned up your barn on a daily basis. What happens if you don't clean it up on a daily basis? Dust settles, right? It gets dirtier and dirtier. Some of you, you forgot that you need to clean it up on a daily basis. You know, for some, you never clean it up. You just paint the barn. But for some, you did open. You cleaned it once, and you forgot about it. And it is growing again, growing and growing and growing. Because you still open that door. You still go back and forth. And then what happens? The sin that you thought you would never, ever commit again, you commit it. The sin that you know it hurts you, your family, and most of all, Lord Jesus Christ, you commit it again and again. And you don't know who you are disappointing the most. Who are you disappointing? Who are you really, really, really saddening? Grieve not the Holy Ghost, right? Do you know the seriousness of this? The reason you don't have perfect peace is because you have sin problem. I mean, simple as that. I mean, if you didn't have sin problem, why wouldn't you have peace? If you're not 100%, you know, peaceful right now, if you don't have 100% perfect peace, it's because there's sin, some sin ruining your life right now. And I could park here for hours and hours and hours because you and I need to listen to it. It's really got to get to your heart. It has to break that facade. It has to break that wall. It has to break that door of the barn so that God's word can really touch your heart so that inside could be washed. Many, many people, including myself, you know, many, many people hear great preachings, but they just hear it, but they never let it go to their heart. So when, after they listen to it, it feels good. Like, man, that was great preaching. I love hearing it. You know, you know it's, it's, a, it's something that you know, I need to apply in my life. But that's it. That's it. It's like, you know what? I'm going to, uh, my testimony, you know, man, I love the preaching. You know, it really convicted me, as they say, you know. But after you leave the church, or even inside the church after like a few minutes later, you're same. It's like, how, how is it that, you know, you're like, you know, it really convicted me and stuff, but you're same. It just tells you it's all about outward appearance. That's it. It's just the outside of the building. It's all outside. That's why it's hard to trust human beings. I mean, it's hard to trust Christians, let alone non-Christians, right? Because whatever they say outside, I mean, who knows what's inside, right? But you shouldn't be someone like that as a Christian. You shouldn't be someone where you say one thing from outside, but you have something else inside of you. You shouldn't be someone, especially to your families, to your wife and husband, your loved ones, you shouldn't be someone who's cleaned up outside, but inside is full of devil and sin. You shouldn't. That's worse. Someone who's actually bad outside and inside and realizes it, they have a better chance of getting cleaned up. But someone who thinks that inside is okay, but outside is the only one that needs to be clean, whoa, you know, from my experience, you'll never change. 
you will seem like changed, but inside, whatever you have dirty stuff inside, it's going to show itself. You're going to commit that sin again, over and over. And as I said earlier, the scary thing is that once you start, because of your flesh, because you're so weak, you're going to go through the whole thing, whole process. If you're a cheater, you're going to cheat all the way. If you're a gambler, you're going to gamble all the way. If you're a druggie, you're going to do drugs all the way. If you're going to do whatever it is, you're going to go to rock concert, you're going to go all the way. You know, if you're going to you know, watch dirty stuff, you're going to go all the way. You will never stop. Because that's how strong sin is. That's how powerful devil is. That's how weak your flesh is. That's why you do not have perfect peace. And you will never have perfect peace unless you clean up your inside. Unless you clean inside of you. Inside out. It's not outside in. It never works that way. Inside out. Once you clean up your inside, outside will be fine. It will, it will just, you know, take care of itself. That's why so many people Give fake smiles. You know, we have Joe Austins of the world, you know, T.D. Jakes or, you know, those prosperity people. You know, they're saying, hey, yeah, 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 everything's good, everything's all right, right? Yeah, you know, you got to become a millionaire, you're going to become, you know, billionaire, you know, the Lord's going to bless you with everything. But inside, I wonder what's going through his mind, right? And all those people, Benny Hinn, everybody out there, or even you, just looking at yourself, when you are acting or when you acted like that, what was going through your heart? What was going through your inside? You're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, brother, I love you. Hey, sister, I love you. You know, man, I hate that person. You know, I, I'm going to go home and talk about that person with my mom, with my dad, with my sister, with my brother, with my wife, with my husband. Man, what a terrible family. What a terrible friend. What a terrible, you know, blah, blah, blah. And you do it. You know why? Because you are so dirty inside that you can and you never completely cleaned it up. So it is a time. It's a time. It's a right time for you to really examine your heart, examine inside, and check. Don't just check just visible things. Go where there's you know, shade, shadow, darkness. Go check every part of your barn. Check every part of your heart. Check every part of your inside and make sure it's clean. You have to get right with the Lord. You have to really, really confess your sins. You know, repent and get right with the Lord. Don't just do it like, you know, fake outside. You want that perfect peace? You really, really, with Lord's help, trusting in the Lord, you know, confess your sins, get right with the Lord. And day by day, that peace grows. Day by day, you're going to really understand that perfect peace. Month by month, you're like, wow. I, when I clean my house, when I clean inside of my house, man, I don't really worry about anything. I just let Lord take control of my house, my inside. So you can't just stop after today. Because some of you, you know, God bless you, right? You're going to get right with the Lord. And you're going to clean up your inside. And you're going to get that peace from the Lord. But don't let it stop after today. It has to continue on a daily basis. That's why people who's close with the Lord, who have right relations with the Lord, people who have that peace, people who's not anxious. You shouldn't be anxious as a Christian because the Bible says, be careful for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which pa passes our understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. That will happen to you. Think about it. Look at your heart today. Do I have perfect peace? If not, I have a sin problem. Then I cannot just paint it outside anymore. I am going to clean inside. Let's pray. Dear Father, thank you for saving us from hell through the precious blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, giving us perfect peace 
when it comes to eternity. However, many of us go through anxious, worrisome, nervous Christian life because we refused to clean up inside the barn. We always paint the outside. We always clean up something that's very visible, but we never clean up. Those things are in the shadow. Those things are hiding, Lord. Heavenly Father, I pray that everyone will really get right with you, Lord, from A to Z, from top to bottom, everything in our heart, so that we'll clean up everything today, tomorrow, until you come back, Lord, so that we'll really enjoy that perfect peace and serve you with perfect peace. We pray for pastors, Cash Shrive, Pastor Mike Shrive, Pastor Matt Crane, and all of our brethren who's going through you know, physical ailments. Pray that you'll be with them, heal them according to your will. And we pray for everyone who's listening. Pray that we'll really realize that we're in the last days. And you're going to come back soon, Lord. Help us to be a great witness for you and help us to continue, continuously help us to go out there and win lost souls for you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everybody.